Hey everybody, it's Hutch, and today we're going to talk about Levana Protocol. So originally when I got approached by the team to do a Q&A interview with Jonathan Karras, head of communications over there, I, I said I'm flattered, but I don't know if I'm the right guy. Uh, I don't really, I, I've seen the artwork, it's beautiful, but I don't really know that much about how meteors interact with dragons and potions. And they said, wait a second, Hutch. Did you realize that Levana stands for leverage any asset? Uh, to which I said, no, I, I missed the memo, sorry. Uh, but you have my attention. And given all the recent volatility we've all experienced uh, and liquidations on Anchor Protocol, uh, I, I was very much interested to see what they had in the way of uh, non-traditional ways to get additional exposure to asset classes we want exposure to, i.e. Luna. Uh, so let's jump into the interview I did with uh, Jonathan Karish and some of the key members of their team. Pleasure to have Jonathan Karras from Levana Protocol. Is I didn't realize that Levana stands for leverage any asset. And I'm like, as a DeFi guy, wait a second, you have my attention here. Uh, I did want to say this is the LFG website. Uh, recently started the Luna Foundation Guard LFG. And you can see Jonathan is part of the governing council. His official title, what was it again, Jonathan? Uh, I'm head of communications uh, at Levana, and uh, we we haven't uh, distributed titles um, at LFG yet, but um, they're probably going to be meme centric. So I'm like, you know, I'm not in a rush for Doe to give me some random uh, name, but I'll take whatever he gives. I figured out the name right now for Remy. I think Remy should be the official redactor. How about that? Oh. I like that. I like that. So we're we're part of uh, Delphi Labs. So Delphi is a research firm. Um, they incubate, you know, they incubated a bunch of projects. Um, they did the token economic on a bunch of projects. You know, things that you've heard of, like like perpetual finance, which is uh, which we were very much inspired by. Um, like, like Astroport. Uh, yeah, so Astroport. You're, 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 well, you're Astroport. With these guys. Yep. So Astroport, Mars. And uh, Levana are the current projects that are being incubated by uh, Delphi. Um, Big Jose, time stuff in the Luna Terra ecosystem. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the guys are rock stars and they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, and the, the team is just so on point. They just are, you know, if you're ever an entrepreneur and you have an opportunity to work with them, they're just best in class. Let's, let's talk a little bit about um, what is uh, Levana. You know, what does it mean to be able to leverage any asset? And then... Let's, because we want to stay, um, uh, you know, mostly DeFi focused here. You know, we'll get into some of like the, you know, the 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 meat of what is a perpetual swap and and why we're so bullish on that as a as a technology that's going to overtake AMMs, which are the primary means of uh, of trading within the decentralized space today. Normally on Wall Street in a centralized exchange, you need some guy that went to uh, uh, Ivy League school and Goldman Sachs, and he's sitting there making a market in DeFi. All of us as citizenry get to provide liquidity to the automated market makers, and we can make money just like those Wall Street guys and what Jonathan's telling us is there's even another level of efficiency. Is that right? Yes, yes. So some of the challenges with AMMs, um, and I apologize, I don't have good graphics for this. Um, I've been saying this for you know a couple of years now, so I really should build an infograph. But um, it's uh, so with an AMM, in order to uh, create the trade um, or create liquidity, a person needs to a market maker. Um, called a liquidity provider, an LP, needs to deposit two tokens. That means that you need to be directionally long to both of those assets. But you didn't necessarily want to be directionally long. You just wanted to make money off of other people trading. You know, Coinbase is not directionally long to all the assets on their platform. Binance isn't directionally long. Robinhood, the app, isn't directionally long to all of those stocks. So in traditional markets, being a market maker and then being directionally exposed to the markets that you're a market maker for are not the same thing. They're not the yeah. same business model. A, a lot of us have experienced that where we get into LPs because we're wooed by these great double digit, triple digit rates of return and we put uh, equal parts in there and then one or more of the assets go down and our whole value has gone down. It's like, great, we're making this great yield, but our position has gone down in value. So exactly. how does... How does Levana help to solve that? With a uh, with a with an AMM, the market makers only make money. The platform only makes money when trading actively happens on that platform. If sure. um, if somebody just hodls 
or if you buy on Uniswap, but you sell on SushiSwap, or you m move it over and you trade on PancakeSwap. So that those market makers that initially sold you the position, they get diddly squat for that like year that you sit and hodl or trade somewhere else. So the um, the perpetual swap has something called a dynamic continuous funding rate, where the where holding a position is actually a form of debt. And debt, you don't need to have high trading volume. You just need to hold debt. The longer that you hold debt, the more that the platform makes money because it's it's a continuous funding rate. So you don't even need um, you know you don't even need a com uh, a community to to actively trade frequently. You just need them to take positions on. So quick quick, quick question about that. So when you mentioned debt, are you saying as the holder of the perpetual, we're actually the creditor of that debt? We're the one earning no. the interest? No? Okay. No, no, no. The market maker is earning the interest and the person okay. who's holding the 10x position, how do you get 10x? Where did that other nine leverage. come from? Leverage. It came through leverage, which is a form of debt. So you're paying the market makers for that debt. So it doesn't matter if you traded that 10x position a thousand times or 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 just once and you just held it for that same year the, 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 the market maker is still making a profit off of the fact that you're holding that position so you're saying so, the position itself is almost like a wrapped margin trade and embedded yes. in that wrapped position is the debt you owe for borrowing the additional exposure to the position correct yes and it's and and perpetuals are a very powerful um method because they simplify a lot of the complexity that uh that you know that that has traditionally been found in 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 options and i was interested in hearing like there there's the lli which i believe is like the the 2x luna yep. token and then there's so that's perp. so yeah so we went into the perps you know and this was a really great opportunity um to, to, to really get to like explain kind of like how perps work and, and what they do. The way to quickly address what is uh, LLI, LLI is, is like the original way to make leverage. And people have been using uh, leverage baskets, you know, even before computers existed. You know, if you went back in the Middle Ages um, to a bank with a bar of gold, so they might give you, um, you know, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's say that, that, that you go into the bank and you, you say, here's one bar of gold, and they say, we'll give you a, a thousand bags of salt, you know, if salt was a currency. Um, so you'll get a thousand bags of salt for that one bar of gold. Um, yeah, this is exactly. So now you might, um, you might you're, you're borrowing those thousand bags of salt um, against the bar of gold that the bank has as collateral. Now, let's say you go out and you go to the, the marketplace and you trade those, ba those bags of salt for a second bar of gold. So now you own one bar of gold in the bank, it's one bar of gold in, in, as collateral, one bar of gold in your hand, and you have um, debt of a thousand bags of salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now let's say that the price of gold doubled; it skyrocketed. So now a bar of gold is worth two thousand bags of salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you you close your position with the bank, and the so and so what do you yeah. own? You own one, one bar of gold. Well, you own one bar of gold in your hand yep. from that you that you bought from the market. You have the second bar of gold, and then you have the thousand debt. So you first you sell your your bar of gold in your hand. So you get two thousand bags of salt. You go to the bank, you pay back, you know, the half of that, and then mm -hmm. they give you your gold, and then you go and you you buy salt with that gold. So now you've got three thousand bags of salt. It's a lot of salt. You're gonna need a donkey or something to carry that. You know, but the price of gold doubled, but yet went up a hundred percent. But you went up two hundred percent. So where did that leverage come from? It came from the cyclical, the cyclical, the process that you went through. But now it's also it's great and it's gravy. But what if you don't want to close your position? What if you? What if the the the, the market moves against you? So now there's all these what ifs. So there needs to be something that's automated, working with the bank, working with the merchants and the bar, the bags of salt and the bars of gold and whatnot. And so that's what a leverage uh, index position does. So you can buy these again. We, you know, this isn't invented. This thing existed before, you know, before electricity existed, before you know people kn knew like uh, you know what germ theory was. Um, and uh, and so what we've done is just automate the process so that people can just go to an AMM like Astroport and say, I'm, you know, freaking bullish on Luna right now. I just want to buy a Luna 2X position. 
And then in the background, all of that complicated lending and borrowing and swapping and rebalancing and stuff is happening in the background. So, so let me ask you this. You, you brought up Delphi Digital and you brought up some other mega projects, Astroport, the, arguably the, the mega decks that will be on Terra. You brought up Mars, which allegedly is a, a borrowing protocol where it's not traditional. Uh, there's gonna, it's going to be based on smart contracts as opposed to, hey, you have X amount of collateral. And now Lavana, are you using Mars? And are you using some of that functionality so to the, create this? So the perpetual swap, uh, what Dave just explained, that that traits, um, that uses Astroport. And then the LLI uses Mars and Astroport. So, awesome. so right. we are, you know, from like the three of us being incubated, um, we share a lot of code base, you know, the, we, it's we, amazing. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great little uh, team that uh, between the, the, the three projects. Well, good guess. Hutch. I kind of heard elements of them all. And then I just put it together when you talked about that connection. So that's, that's really cool. So really you guys are a culmination of these, awesome, exciting projects that, as you said, are being incubated by the best of breed. And so Levana, from what I'm hearing, is going to be able to provide these advanced markets of perpetual swaps, two times leverage, which at the end of the day, have to have some form of debt in there. And you're going to be using the market making capabilities of Astroport and the let's just say non-traditional lending features of Mars to be able to bring this to market for all of us, right? Absolutely, yep. So if you scroll down, you can kind of see even in the TradeFi ecosystem, um, we have, um, there you go. So you see the derivatives market is, it massively dwarfs the spot market. Yeah. But what, but, and then here, this is a great example of uh, the current DeFi derivative market is even smaller than the current spot market. Now. That's mostly just because of poor implementation, because of technical constraints, and because of lack of understanding and lack of UI UX improvements. But eventually, we anticipate that the overlap, that the uh, that that the rightful place of the of of the equivalent, it's not really derivatives, um, but that we use that term for the for sake of analogy. Mm -hmm. um, but but the equivalent of uh, of futures, derivatives, synthetics, whatever it is that you want to call it, will mirror. The, the natural um, uh, corresponding uh, exposure um, centralized finance. ratio uh, of the, that you find within external markets. It looks like your head dev is joining us now. You know, we have this uh, this cool thing about the, the risk fund that we were dealing with today, which I think is pretty innovative. Um, we're still hashing out the details of that. Um, so I, I don't think we'll cool. to... what, what, What's it do, Dave? Yeah, so I mean, the, the basic idea is that because people are able to uh, open with leverage and we have you know, people trading against each other, it is possible for someone to go into uh, to debt and, they, you know, and, and, the, and there isn't enough money in the, in the market itself to pay the users back. So we have a risk fund, um, which we then reach out to uh, in order to kind of like supplement, you know, we have like tranches of, of money to fall back on. So, so you know, we don't have to like, you know, uh, go begging in the streets or break anybody's kneecaps. Like we have these reserve funds <laughs> that can be used to, to like, you know, pay back. God, the, God forbid either one of those. Is Again, this the Levana token or is this the token that they're trading on leverage? This is the Levana token. Um, and the details here are still being worked out. Um, so I'm a little, that's why I'm also a little shaky on, on the, like all the nitty gritty. It's a really interesting concept. And maybe, maybe you do or you don't have the answer. But, but one question that came to mind is, you know, you said if there was a shortfall because somebody was over leveraged, I would think that there's some safeguards in place, but we're talking about that if somebody slips through the cracks and they're, they're probably not going to come pay it back out of the goodness of their heart. So does the secondary tranche and people who deposit their Levana tokens for the extra yield, do they get made whole, the vet, made whole eventually with fees, even if they, you know, went to pay a debt and it's just not there? Or is it like, oh, you know, you got paid all those fees, but now you just lost? Or is it like, Hey, if you hang out long enough, we're going to make you whole. You kind of see here that the fraction of trading fees goes into the primary tranche, and then that kind of goes down into the secondary tranche, which is where people stake. And so, yeah, they do get filled back up. Nice. Um, Let's look at the traditional DeFi model. Was okay. you would um, you would market to a narrow market of um, of uh, of Web three users. Now, these Web three users 
um, they're pretty much at this point, there's no new uh, entrance into the market. You know, you, um, you sit down and you try and tell people like, hey, you know, Anchor can get you 20% APY. And they and people will like look at you like you're crazy. But you tell them, hey, people are flipping, you know, pudgy penguins for 10x because people like collecting JPEGs on the internet. And they go, yeah, that makes sense. I'll, I'm, I'm down. Let's do that. <laughs> Um, let's go <laughs> yeah yeah and so so you know there's the you know the new like the 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 new entrance into the the crypto space over the last 18 months has been entirely through entertainment it's been and through entertainment on coinbase and binance through through um through meme coins which For are sure. a form of entertainment you know For elon sure. talks about how we're gonna buy mcdonald's Big Macs with uh, doge coins and people love doge and they love the the meme and the dog and they and love dogs yeah it's and, an entertainment. And even Mark Cuban said that NFTs, the art movement, obviously so many things are going to be tokenized via NFTs in traditional finance before too long. But even just the art movement of JPEGs and NFTs, Cuban said that, hey, you know, that was just proof of concept that you can create a marketplace and you can create transa decentralized transactions via programmable money and smart contracts. So that phase is still here. But I agree that uh, now we have proof of concept. Watch out. Exactly, exactly. And that's what we're trying to innovate. We're trying to say, well, you know, how can we take this, uh, how can we take the, the fact that um, new users are coming in primarily through entertainment, and then learn from that, and then build the best, you know, freaking thing in the market from that. So again, what's the problem that we have is that every product in the DeFi space um, goes after the same 50, it's somewhere between 10,000 to 50,000 institutional It's very incestuous. Farmers. Money's just moving around. It, even yep. down Terra, you see it. Like the, the new protocol launches and all the money goes there and then the next one goes and it leaves and it goes there. Yep. Exactly. So what is that? Is that people, there's no product market fit. Nobody cares whether or not people want to use the products. Everybody <clears> just jumps in because of high APYs. The protocols themselves get basically like ostriches put their head in the sand and say oh everybody loves us look at our pro token price if things are great we've got a hundred million dollars worth of uh the locked value because we're giving out like a bazillion percent apy so of course people are bringing it over so for they now yeah, yeah exactly for now but so then once the initial honeymoon phase um it, you know ends so then um the then people just dump onto the amm and if it's protocol if protocol owned liquidity that's even worse then you get then then the the bag holder at the end of the dump is the protocol itself, right? And you know, they basically bled their treasury. Nobody is participating in the DAOs. Nobody is coming and locking up tokens so that they can vote. And we even saw that like on Mirror when people voted in for the second time the Netflix token. It's just because they're getting paid to vote. You know, you can't like it's mm. it's so you end up with every project kind of has this you know this like rotation where people come in. You get this spike at the beginning of the project. And then like the token price uh, drops down. And, so, then, and that's what we're seeing there in the pink. And and yeah. And so basically what you're saying is everybody's buying the market and there's no stickiness to it. Yep. And, and, and it's just instant. It's, it's just <clears throat> really good farmers cycling their, their um, liquidity. So if you scroll down, you can look at the token economic model, which we've called DeFi attainment. And now this is a play on words, just how Lavana means. It means moon. Um, it means uh, lift up. Um, you know, it uh, it also means leverage any asset. So DeFi attainment stands for um, decentralized finance entertainment, and it also means decentralized finance containment. So okay, what we do is so we add to it a front end which is entertaining, which is fun, which can attract a wide market of fresh blood. Because if you don't get fresh blood into the ecosystem, you just get this kind of you know this like uh, this circle like what you mentioned previously. So we go after, you build a game, and that game um, is, uh, it targets a large audience, and they're motivated not to just come in and, and get the highest amount of rewards. They're motivated to come in and, and to have a good time and to explore the same way that we play Candy Crush. So now in the game, you introduce them to perps, which again, as we mentioned at the beginning of the, of the call, is the most lucrative uh, uh, product that you can bring um, retail traders to. So now they're introduced to perps within the gameplay. Now they start getting farming rewards. They start getting, you know, not only do they make money off of their, their trading, hopefully, um, but they also start getting farming rewards. But now instead of giving the option, 
which was the previous DeFi model, which is either go and play a in a DAO or go and dump on an AMM. We now say, hey, those LVN tokens that you got, why don't you use them to level up your character? Why don't you use them to get a new sword? Why don't you use them to unlock a new part of the map? And so now they, they start burning <clears throat> their LVN tokens in order to be able to level up within the game. And now it becomes the cyclical relationship. Once they level up in the game, so now they they have a more exposure to better, more farming rewards. Um, so now we've created this this symbiotic relationship between the core DeFi protocol and the gaming experience, which is on top of it. And then that um, now creates a closed loop system, which avoids the pump and dump, and creates long term value. I got it. You know what it reminds me of? It's almost like a microcosm of what Do did. Do Quan did. Like he had Chai and he had this stable coin merchant services business and decided to build a DeFi space around it so that people would come in and not leave the ecosystem. Yep. Raising my hand, I became one of those people. And we know lots of them. I got the I got the 220 MIR airdrop. It brought me over. I started playing with uh with Terra, and then that was it. The rest was history. How do you tie the perps back into that world? Is it have exactly. to do with the intra-commerce within the game? Exactly. Is that because perps are such a flexible uh, trading technology, it, 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 imagine instead of coming in and then saying like, oh, like imagine a quest where the quest is you have to go to one village and you have to buy a certain amount of gold or oil. And mm -hmm. now, but imagine that you are actually buying futures contracts for oil. That, that and it, it price fluctuates based on the real world price of oil, not sure, not on something sure. just made in a game. Now you could decide, you know what? I want twice as I don't want to make two trips. I just want to make one trip. So I'm going to get two x uh, leveraged oil, but that Got also it. makes it more risky. So what if I get ten x leverage oil? Well, if I'm walking, if I'm now with my uh, with my my group, uh, and we're walking back, what if there's a margin cost? So that means that the maybe our Maybe the, the, the our wagons, the wheel broke off and like half of the oil spilled. Maybe marauders or bandits came and attacked us. Maybe, maybe I see that you're, you know, you got stuck in a pit and you're slowly sinking, which means what's really happening in the background is that your your margin call is happening. <laughs> I need to come I need to, to help you, to bail you out, and then that's gonna cost some of my resources. And it's no different than if we were playing a dun Dungeons and Dragons and I have to use some of my mana to heal you because you accidentally fell off a cliff. Sure. Uh, Church Key, did you have anything to add to that? I mean, I, I just learned a whole lot about the game and what's coming. I know you're deeply engrossed in the game. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know, you know, I've learned about how how uh, the DAO is so important for, uh, you know, decentralized finance. So um, when the DAO forms, will we be able to suggest, let's say, um, the certain ideas for utility of the dragons to interact uh, directly with the uh, you know the trading platform, like for insurance or something like that. So that's one of the things that's most excited about having a strong community. You know, most uh, most DeFi protocols fail to gain enough community engagement to be able to make meaningful decisions like that. And I mean, Churchkey, you see this. Uh, you, I think you're in the 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 Discord channel probably um, five times as much as uh, as I am, um, right. and you've seen how engaged and how um, emotionally invested people are of making sure that their dragons um, uh, have a broad spectrum of of control over the platform and that's something that we're super excited about and and this is also a um, a, a massive opportunity uh, because it shows that if somebody actually look I could you could farm and I could give you tokens 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 but at the end of the day you don't have any emotional attachment to those tokens. But if you raise a baby dragon from an egg and you customize it and you feed it and you train it, the likelihood that you're going to um, optimize what can happen with that is, I mean, it's basically a given from my perspective. I mean, I've raised birds from eggs and, and those, there's nothing that there's no, um, like, like it's just it's a different motherly love than if you just went to a pet store and you bought it, or if you know you like went to like uh, Parrot Kingdom and like you took the picture of it with on your soul on your shoulder. 
So the, the short answer is that, yes, I'm incredibly optimistic about what the, what the community is going to come up with, about um, how the NFTs will directly be able to interact with the, uh, with the protocol. And, and I think that's a theme I'm hearing across the DeFi world is that you do get more engagement when people feel they have ownership. And so like you talk about raising a dragon or being part of a DAO, which for those that don't know is decentralized autonomous organization. But when you're directly involved with the decision making, just like at, at a company, you're more invested in what's going on there as opposed to it just being a job or it just being a currency or it just being a game or just being a means to an end. So as you can see, Levana Protocol is a lot more than your run-of-the-mill uh, NFT project, albeit beautiful, albeit with intricate and engaging architecture uh, on the gaming side. On the DeFi side, they have really big plans to, to really bring us uh, flexibility and some unique offerings and how we get exposure, additional exposure to asset classes we want, directions we want possibly at times. And given the team that they're connected at the hip with, uh, uh, Delphi Digital, Astroport, the premier DEX on Terra, Mars, the up and coming non-traditional uh, lending protocol. I foresee great things for Levana in the future. So stay tuned.